Hello, Hollywood Time viewers. Judy Shields here. Today, we welcome back, and glad that he's here, actor, producer, and owner of Damascus. Is that how you say it? Damascus Road That's Productions. Right. Ryan O'Quinn. Hi, Ryan. How you doing? Uh, I am great, Judy. Thank you so much for bringing me back. So good to be on your show again. Thank you. You're welcome. It's it's good. And I see a poster behind you, which I have too. Today, uh, yes. we're here to talk to Paul about his uh, new movie that he starred in and produced, and it's called Bringing Back Christmas. We are very excited. Yeah, the last the last time I was on your show, uh, we were talking about my movie, Paul's Promise, Paul's Promise. Uh, right around this time last year. But we're super excited about this one. It's another one, uh, Judy, for the whole family. You know, that's kind of the forte for Damascus Road. Uh, we, we love to... Um, get projects out into the marketplace that are good for the whole family. So, I, you know, I often say uh, it's rare when you can find uh, a, a piece of entertainment to watch where your grandkids can sit next to you or perhaps your grandparents on the other side of you and uh, and not have to, uh, you know, do that dance that, that as parents we often do where we slowly slink down into our seats when there's when there's programming or, or uh, you know, or a movie that you don't really want to have that conversation yet or, or you know, you, you're trying to explain something or, or whatever, but but this is one of those that uh, one of those projects that came across our desk that have uh, both heart and humor, which is kind of a rare combination, and and we're really proud of it. Yeah, I guess it's you know it is it kind of reminded me of you know reminiscence of it's a wonderful life. You know, it's funny, it's absolutely kind of story. You know, reminds me of the heartfelt lessons. Uh, you know, faith and uh, because you know God is with us. Uh, how did this script find its way to you? Yes, I have to credit our writers, Trey and Ariel Fernald, uh, had actually mounted this, uh, this mis what is now a movie, uh, as a play. It was a live play mm -hmm. that traveled around all over the country and, and did very well on the play circuit and oftentimes in churches. And, uh, you know, and, and you mentioned It's a Wonderful Life. I don't want to steal their thunder, but they'll be the first to tell you that it is certainly an homage, you know, tip of the hat to... Uh, to that amazing film, you know, what has become a, a Christmas classic, obviously, you know, after uh, all these years later. But it is a um, a story of a guy aptly played, by the way, uh, by Mark Christopher Lawrence, who's just wonderful in the movie. He plays a character named Daniel Reese, who, um, at risk of giving anything away, he, he's laid off uh, at the beginning of the film. And, uh, you know, all the all the, the things that runs through one's head when there are trials or tribulations or, you know, work life conflicts uh, like that and so he is uh he is approached by an angel uh and and lee allen baker is our angel and she is absolutely charming and just so funny in this you, you know she's familiar to to a, a wide range of audiences but uh, uh more recently good luck charlie and just you know audiences of all ages just love and appreciate lee allen's work and so she plays the angel that mm -hmm. much like uh much like uh, um it's a wonderful life. She invites Mark Christopher's character to go back in time and to be sort of a fly on the wall to watch that first uh, that first Christmas when Mary and Joseph are getting ready to have that baby uh, and all of the all of the nuances that go into into that. You know, some things haven't changed in two thousand years. Like uh, you know, the the soon to be uh, in laws are, will never be good enough for your own kid and when they do have a baby, who's going to get that baby at the holiday time? And so just, just all of that funny fighting that uh, that goes on amongst family but you know ties up beautifully wraps up sweet and in a and a, a genuine reminder that that god is with us even through the hard times yeah and speaking about in-laws uh you happen to be one one of them what was it like uh you know you being your character how did you resonate with your character yeah i i i had the great fortune of playing mary's dad in this movie and uh, since you've seen it you will you will know straight away that i didn't use my own accent in this movie uh, i i i had a uh, <laughs> i affected a very new york uh you know sitcom -y accent and that was a, a choice we made early on you know yeah. Trey and ariel kind of uh, uh, sort of wrote the character that way and we got the chance to toy <laughs> with it in the rehearsal process and then the development process so we made the made the decision, I think, wise decision to just lean into it. So uh, the rest of our, our, you know, the other parents, Suzanne Neff, who played my wife, and Teresa Wu and Barry Piacente, they just leaned into it. And so they played Joseph's <laughs> parents and, and Suzanne and I were, were Mary's parents. And it is truly one of the funniest things I, I think I've ever done on film. And, <laughs> and again, credit to the writing for sure. But we also had a little bit of 
of leeway. Lisa Arnold, who was our brilliant director, gave us some some, uh, some wide berth there to have fun with it, and uh, and we took advantage. I I think you know one of, what you see in the final version is one of the only takes that one of us didn't crack up. So uh, it was it was fun. When when you came on, I'm like, wait a minute, I had to like pause it and like look to see. I'm like, is that him? That's not his voice. Yeah. I, 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 it was quite funny. I have to tell you, and, I, and I'm, I'm probably betraying some confidences here and Bill Evil will, will kill me, but our brilliant editor, Bill, and I was, you know, I, I was one of the producers of the movie. So I, I was on from, you know, from day one uh, and in the, in the, the pre-production process and Bill, who was our editor and was on, on set, on site every single day, about a week and a half into the movie, he went, wait, is that you? And so I thought that was, and, and by the way, no, no, uh, no credit to my uh, ability for sure, but just the, the, the funny writing from Trey and Ariel, but it, it, it even uh, tricked him. So you'll, it's a little bit of an Easter egg to find me in this movie, but uh, it, uh, it was, it was hysterical. I feel better now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're so, not alone. Um, so why do you film? why do you feel that the film's so important right now? Oh, well, you know, it, it, like I mentioned before, anytime you can you have a um, any any type of entertainment or content that you can enjoy with the entire family, it's a little bit rare, you know, and it's not mm -hmm. it's not unheard of, needless to say. But it is, um, you know, those are the kind of movies that I want to see with my family and the kind of content that we want to create at Damascus Road is that kind of content where you can you can sit down with the entire family, enjoy uh, start to finish, uh, uh, in this case, a humorous romp and a sort of tongue in cheek look at we, we obviously take some creative license here. I mean, this this is this is not biblical uh, jot and tittle biblical, uh, you know, as to exactly what you see. We took some some license, but it's a, an interesting take on what is, uh, you know, an idea of the same same problems that were inherent and existent 2000 years ago. And uh, probably more importantly, and, and speaking of takeaway, as I mentioned before, just the notion that um, despite our ups and downs and despite our challenges and the and the nuances of, of daily life, whether it was zero uh, B.C. or uh, or or 2023, you know, we all have problems and issues. And, you know, our our, our thought and our uh, sort of takeaway message is that that God is there. And, and if you if we uh, turn around. Uh, he's willing to help. So that's the message of the film. Great. Whose idea was it to uh, get Dean Kane? Love that guy. We've done four movies with yes, Dean. He's I the thought. best. Uh, yeah, we, we have a picture coming out soon uh, called Little Angels that Dean wrote, produced, directed, starred in. It's a it's a, a kid's soccer movie, which I'm excited to come back on the show and talk about. Uh, yes. I will keep you posted. Can but, you bring uh, him too? Dean, I would love that. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he will. I'm sure the he'll be happy to come back. He has recently moved from Malibu to uh, to Las Vegas. He loves Las Vegas now, but he, he travels all over the world, needless to say. But yeah. we've done four, I think, four movies uh, with Dean, and uh, he is genuinely one of the nicest people in in Hollywood for sure. And uh, and, and I, dare I say, the hardest working guy. You know, on the on that yeah. other film I was talking about, Little Angels, he was the first one on the set, the last one to leave, and he was. He was all, you know, he was every position. I mean, he, he, like I said, it was his direct feature directorial debut. He's directed a lot of television, uh, but it was his feature film um, directorial debut and he wrote it and he's number one on the call sheet. So uh, wow. you know, that's, a, that's a tall order for anybody, but he had a, a, a permagrin every second uh, on and off the screen. And uh, I'm excited for audiences to see that one as well. Oh, me too. Can't can't wait to talk to you both about that one. That's coming up, folks. <laughs> so where was yep. this uh, movie actually filmed? We filmed outside of Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, we um, you, you would never know probably from from looking at it. And uh, we filmed last summer and it was on some day, definitely into the triple digits. Many of the days we filmed on one of the days, I think it was 111. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we filmed at Capernaum Studios, uh, a little west of, of the Dallas Fort Worth area. If you are familiar with the series The Chosen. Uh, Capernaum Studios is where they filmed The Chosen uh, for the first two seasons. And it, so that that set, that, you know, B.C. era set was was intact. And we got to kind of step into those uh, oh. that existing set and not have to build too much. You know, our, our production, our art department and, and production designers were incredible. But we had a uh, the bones of a of a, you know, a, a set that was that was Bethlehem. And so yeah. we got to utilize that. And so we we filmed there. 
our, our local Texas crew was absolutely incredible. I, I, I loved every minute that we were there, but, and hats off to all of our, our extras and all of our, our whole cast and crew, because as I mentioned, you know, you can imagine when those, when we had on those, authentic wool you know uh frocks and 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 you know we're we're encouraging uh upwards of 85 extras to to pretend it's you know 35 degrees outside when it's really 105 it was, it was quite a tall order so the, the team running between takes and and mopping people's sweat off their brow all the while uh, oh. blowing fake snow was was quite an undertaking <laughs> You had to be there to, to appreciate it, right? <laughs> you really did, yeah. And that, you know that happens a lot. Needless to say, in movie making, you don't often film a Christmas movie at Christmas time, of course. But we filmed in the in the heat of the summer in July in Texas, and uh, and somehow pulled it off to make it seem Christmassy. So. It, you sure did an amazing job. I saw no sweat on you. <laughs> oh well, thank you. That that's only because of our amazing makeup department because it was pouring. Oh, man. Uh, I also understand I read that it, the film premiered at a Dream Center charity event. Uh, how was that? Yeah, that's coming up, actually. We, we've oh, got a couple of happened? premieres coming up. Yeah, I will, I will keep you posted, but uh, I actually leave tomorrow morning uh, to go back to Grundy, Virginia. I grew up in a small coal mining town in southwest Virginia called Grundy. And Taylor Cole, who is one of our producers uh, and also has a, has a role in this film, uh, he and I both grew up in this, this small town in uh, Appalachia, and they have been so, so good and so supportive of my career over the years. And anytime I get the opportunity to uh, to go back to that hometown, I do. And they show up in force. I did a movie there in 2016 called Believe. It was, an, it was another mm -hmm. Christmas film. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just to give it one, one, you know, one little example of, of how supportive they are, we were hoping to get 200 people. And again, this was also in in March uh, that we filmed that movie and it was supposed to be in at Christmas time, <laughs> another Christmas picture. But uh, you know, we were hoping to get about 150 or 200 extras to show up and, you know, with, with the, uh, the technology and post-production, you're able to sort of copy and paste and make it look like there's a lot more people there. And so we just kind of threw it out on social media and a couple of, a uh, couple of mentions on, you know, on our radio interview and, uh, and social media and the local newspaper. And I think there were 2,200 extras that showed up and stayed all night long and filmed the scene. And, and it was just unbelievable. But that's just a, just an example of how supportive my hometown is. And so we, uh, when we did Paul's promise last year, uh, you know, it ran in, uh, in all the screens, you know, in, in that town and uh, ran for weeks and weeks and weeks. And so, we, we decided, given the opportunity to do a, a, a premiere, and, and the movie is available, by the way, on streaming, but we have a small theatrical release, and we, we didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to go on back to, to my hometown in Grundy, Virginia. And, uh, and I think they're nearly sold out for all the shows this weekend, so it's going to be fun to see friends and family. So you'll be back there this weekend for that. You're getting ready to go yep. back. Yeah. Uh, exactly. How fun. I, I leave tomorrow. Oh, so cool. I have to tell you, I'm I'm totally into scores and the songs. It added so much warmth to this film. Tell us about the music used. It really did. Oh, yeah. The, the music was incredible. And we were so fortunate um, to land our, our composer and our and the and our writers, Pablo Aguirre. And, and you know, we've got Grammy award winning composers, uh, which yeah. is, you know, at a, a, at a film you know, sub $10 million production budget, it's, you're kind of hard pressed to get these award winners and these, these highly valuable scores. And you're exactly right. You know, the score um, mm -hmm. makes the movie, you know, mm -hmm. there's just no way to say it. So, uh, and we had incredible writers, um, Gabe Brown, uh, who was in the movie, he goes by Black Griffin uh, on, on his social media platforms, but Gabriel Brown is an incredible artist, incredible musician. Um, he sang one of the songs. Nittany Paris wrote one of the movies, uh, the, the title song of the movie we had for King and Country. Uh, oh. You know, we got a, got a song for, for King and Country that's in the film. Um, uh, Chad Reiser and his wife, Erica Reiser, sang a song in the movie just beautifully. And, and the, the soundtrack is available on all the all the places where you find music, you know, Spotify and uh, Apple Music and everywhere else. So just look oh. up "Bringing Back Christmas." But we're we're extremely proud of that soundtrack and the score, and um, yeah, and, you know, and especially that that title song that was written for the movie. Oh yeah, definitely got to go and download that. It's good to know that it's out there, and so they can uh, our viewers can actually uh, see your movie right now streaming. They can, yeah, it's actually streaming right now. It's out uh, everywhere. Uh, I say everywhere. I should probably qualify that a little bit, but it's out on Apple. Uh, Apple TV uh, okay. is available. It's out on Amazon. 
Uh, it's also on in demand, uh, Voodoo, uh, Voodoo Fandango, Cox Cable, Charter oh, Cable. Wow. So, you know, all, all across the board. It's not on Netflix. Uh, we got that question the other day, but it's ne nearly every other place where you stream content. It's available right now. And it's perfect, needless to say, perfect for Christmas. So I, I encourage all of your viewers to grab a bowl of popcorn, sit down with the whole family and, uh, and turn it on this week. Yeah. It'll get you in the Christmas spirit for sure. Will Fandango be showing it on some of the big screens as well? Do you know? Uh, I did on certain markets. So we're mm -hmm. in, uh, like I mentioned, that's the small markets in Virginia. We're on in a, in a theater in, uh, we're on in New Mexico where we filmed Paul's Promise last year. Mm -hmm. They're big fans and big, you know, big supporters. Uh, a couple of places in Southern California. Um, uh, there'll be another premiere here in Los Angeles uh, in mid-December. So, uh, yeah, there'll be a handful of places, that, you know, I encourage you to, to check local listings wherever you are and, and see if it's playing near you. If not, uh, the comfort of your own couch also works well. Yeah, we finally last year, I got my kids uh, one of those big blow up screens because we have like movie nights. Oh, yeah. In the backyard. So, uh, yeah, we do, we, yeah. we do the same. Yeah. 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 Living in Southern California, you know, there's a, yes. there's a, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> pros and cons no matter where you live. But uh, one of the things we I often say we pay for here is, yes. uh, you know, 350 days of sunshine. So we have one of those inflatable screens, too. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it, we, we find ourselves regularly in the backyard just just watching outside. So that's a good idea. Yeah, because this is one of our uh, movies to to watch. We kind of wait until like December 1st, you know, when when the season yeah. starts to start watching those movies. <laughs> Yeah, that's I, I think so. I think December first is a good sort of benchmark for us to go. Okay, now I, you know, Thanksgiving is out of the way. Now I can put up the tree. Now I can put out those decorations and and start that long list of Christmas movies. And so, uh, I I just hope people add this to their list. We have we have high hopes that this will be a, a favorite for years to come. You know these these uh, these Christmas films, pun intended, are often evergreen movies, meaning they just you know year after year they're they're timeless. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really am proud of this one. And I think this one has the has the, the, the probability of being that on everybody's, you know, short list from years for years to come. The reason I one of the reasons, you know, for liking it, too, is that I myself have been let go of a job a couple of times. And, you know, mm -hmm. you think back at how you felt. And I mean, sure. it may have happened to people that are going to watch this may have not. But if it haven't where you're blessed that it hasn't, but if it has, it kind of makes you resonate back, look into your life and then kind of share it with your kids because it could happen to your kids. And, you know, and this is a good way to, to, to look back at, you know, Mary and, and Joseph and, you know, not take it so hard on yeah. us, you know? Sure. And, you know, this, this, uh, yeah, exactly. It's, and in, in this case, you know, Daniel's character has worked at the same job for 17 years nice. and it's just, you know, we kind of highlight the fact that nobody is immune, you know, yeah. there's a barrage of factors, needless to say, that, that speak into that, but nobody's immune to exactly that. And so right before Christmas, he loses his job. And uh, a lot of people have been there. And, and if, and if not exactly that, I'm sure there's, there's ways that people can relate. And so, you know, the, the bottom line is we, we've all had, we've all had hardships. We've all had trials. We've all, you know, contemplated all, you know, all kinds of things, depending on how, you know, how things go, you know what's going on in our in our day to day life, but uh, but he has a, he has an opportunity to encounter an angel, yeah. <laughs> literally in the in the movie, who uh, who helps him uh, see the light of day. So it's, yeah. it's fun. We don't want to give away too much, but you do have angels in this movie. Uh, how did you cast those angels? Those particular. Oh wow! We, yeah, we we you know everybody was a first choice. We were so fortunate with our cast on this film. You know you. When you're in the pre-production phase and the development phase of any any project, any any film or, or television show, you sort of build out what we call a pitch deck, and you put your your top uh, your top priorities. If I had all the all the resources in the world, who would be the best for these roles? And and it's rare that you get all of your favorites, you know, mm -hmm. that you've had on your original pitch deck. But in this case, uh, we did, we, and we saw a lot of people for all the roles, just like any you know any any film project. But our angels were just amazing. You know, they. We would we would have we'd love for them to sing. That was sort of a, a prerequisite. There's ways to to trick that and fake that with Hollywood magic. But in this case, it was unbelievable. The, the, uh, Veronica Clayton and um, and Gabriel Brown and Tank Jones is just spectacular in this movie. Tank was in our last film, uh, Paul's Promise, and he's yes. he, he plays the angel Gabriel in this movie. And so everybody just knocked it out of the park. And you know, in some cases, they're just they're just showing up for a day or two on set. Um, Tank got to work with his son. His son, Rajon Jones, uh, is in the movie and plays um, Daniel and Talia Alanis' 
son in the film. And I think this was the, the fifth movie uh, of, I think I've done even more since then, but Tank and his son got to be together uh, oh. in another movie. And so we were, we were blessed and, and uh, happy to help facilitate that. But he was, he was just brilliant as well. But again, across the board, I mean, there's not a, uh, I'm slightly biased, but there's not a weak link in the whole thing. You know, everybody, everybody is great. Isabel Almoyan, who has just had, an, had a wonderful year. She plays our, our Mary, but she's just killing it. She's in every, everything coming and going. I mean, you, you flip on the TV and, and Isabel is there. Gray Acuna, who is incredible. He was our first choice for Joseph. He yeah. knocks it out of the park. I mean, just so good. And even the, you know, even the bit roles and the, and the cameos, uh, Aaron yeah. Fullen, who is just a, the funniest guy. I've, I've admired Aaron and, and sort of watched his, his <laughs> social media posts for years. And, uh, and, you know, just, he doesn't live in Hollywood uh, on purpose. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you may think, oh, well, you know, he's going to miss out on things by not living here, but doggone it. He's same kind of thing. He's showing up in everything right and left and his zip code doesn't matter a bit. And so we were so thrilled to, to cast him in this role and he just, he, he steals the, the scene for sure. So just all across the board, we, <laughs> you know, we were so fortunate to, to get everybody we wanted. So it makes me really proud. You did an amazing job. Talk about your production company for us really quick. Yeah, my company is Damascus Road Productions. Um, we, uh, we're an LA based film and television production company. Uh, you can probably glean from the title that we, we err on the side of uh, faith and family projects. That's our mm-hmm. forte. Um, it's not always, you know, it's not always on the nose, uh, what you might consider an evangelical project, you know, outside of a, of a biopic, uh, you, you know, it may not be on the nose uh, church project, but it will always be um, uh, wholesome and it will always, you know, have an, uh, have an elevated, uh, we often say internally elevated content and, and truth that is scattered somewhere in there. I mentioned before our, our soccer movie is not a faith movie by any stretch, but it's certainly a family movie. And it's, you know, it's, it's again, that, that concept and idea of um, making content that, that is good for the whole family. There'll always be a takeaway. There'll always be a positive message in there uh, by design. Uh, and, and those are the kind of projects that we want to, you know, that we want to keep, keep putting out into marketplace. Thank you for that. This is a, an amazing, beautiful movie and I can't wait to oh, you. spread it for everybody out there. We'll do our best. Uh, we will turn this into a YouTube video. Uh, we'll be on the uh, Hollywood Times uh, official YouTube. It will also go into a article on the Hollywood Times today. So uh, we will put your social media out there. Do you have social media for the movie itself or your own? We do. Yeah, we're on uh, we're on all the socials at Bringing Back Christmas Movie. Okay. Uh, and and uh, the, the website is bringingbackchristmasmovie.com. All right, great. And so we look forward to maybe seeing you at the premiere that you're going to have here in Los Angeles. Absolutely. I will I will keep you posted, Judy, and I'd love to see you there live in person. That sounds great. And we'll talk to you soon about this upcoming movie, too. So uh, God bless. Yeah. Have a happy holidays. Uh, I know hopefully I'll see you before, but happy holidays to you and your family. And we always appreciate Thank you so you. much. I, I appreciate that. And happy holidays to you and, and all of your viewers as well. Thank you so much.